and welcome or welcome back to Marshmallow Reads. I'm Marcy and today I'm going to be trying something new. So I have been getting ads just like through Google or Goodreads about upcoming releases and I am notably excited for some of these and going into the list I found some other ones that I am also excited about. So I figured I'd do a whole video on it exciting upcoming releases. <laughs> so one thing to note that um, the publication dates listed for each of these books, they're not all set in stone. Um, so it's like the general date. Most of them are, especially like the closer ones, like in July and August are probably pretty set, but especially getting into September. I don't think I'm actually going to be able to read all of these when they come out. It's just, these are the books whose covers I am uh, very into covers and, and very susceptible to pretty covers um, but the the descriptions themselves as well also piqued my interest and maybe at least for some of these I, I will get around to this year but we'll see. All right let's start with July books. The first few are supposed to be coming out on the 6th so pretty soon. Such a Quiet Place by Megan Miranda I read at least one of her books um, and I did enjoy it so I'm excited to see what this mystery thriller is going to be like. And I'll just be reading the the brief descriptions I got from like the articles or Goodreads stuff just so you have an idea of what these books are like and maybe if you are interested in them. A year and a half after the murder of the Truett family, the idyllic town of Hollow's Edge is shocked when the woman they all testified against is back and her conviction is overturned. So that sounds awkward. <laughs> I'm interested to see, is she actually innocent? And if she is, who killed this family? Next, we have The Stranger in the Mirror. Uh, this is another mystery thriller uh, based on the description. It very much sounds like a domestic thriller. A woman with no memory of her past worries about her approaching wedding while a man searches for his wife who mysteriously vanished. Sounds like she's that missing woman, but you know, I don't know. Maybe there's some more interesting twists and turns to this book. Uh, the both the storyline and even the cover remind me a lot of this other book I read somewhat recently, Before I Go to Sleep, which is about this woman, someone's wife as well, who wakes up every day and doesn't remember a thing before like 20 years ago or something because she has amnesia and she has to discover mysteries about her life, her husband, and like what they've been hiding from her. and. I did like it and I enjoyed it so that's why I'm maybe more drawn to this one because of how similar it is but if it retreads the same ground that Before I Go to Sleep did I might be a little bummed. Scheduled to come out on the 13th is China Room. Uh, this is a historical fiction. This one it's set in 1929 rural Punjab in, in India where three brides are marrying three brothers in a single ceremony. Sounds pretty busy. <laughs> and then one of them tries to figure out which brother she's married. Cause she's not entirely sure. Like, are are you my husband? You? Like, I don't know, it, it sounds like, almost like the setup of a rom-com, but like in a historical fiction setting. That's kind of what I hope it is. If it's not that, I, I don't know. I'll see. <laughs> it does sound like chaos. Ooh, okay. I am super excited for this one. Becky Chambers is like one of my all-time faves by now and she has a new series starting up with A Psalm for the Wild Built and it's about a monk and a robot who meet. Um, so in this world it's like centuries after robots have I guess gained sentience or like free will and they've decided to stop working for humans because they don't want to be their slaves. So it's in this period where this monk and this robot meet. In this world people also don't have to work so they just like have pleasant lives which sounds great. Hmm. A 
maybe similar to something we can get going with universal basic income, but we'll see. If you are a human living in such a world, what what do you do? <laughs> like what drives you forward? Do you pursue your dreams? Do you still like work? <laughs> I don't know. Like does having more things matter? It, it sounds interesting. Okay, this one's out on the 20th of July, The Book of Accidents. This is a horror. I have been getting back into horror, so I'm like all about any any new releases that look promising. Um, so this synopsis says, although haunted by their traumatic childhoods, Nathan and Maddie still move back to their hometown when strange things begin to happen to their son. So it sounds like whatever's going on with their son is possibly tied back to their hometown or maybe they're going back to their hometown to like convalesce. I don't know. Children do be spooky sometimes. So I don't know if that's going to be and stuff I might just go ahead and buy this one and, and look at the cover it is mwah, it's beautiful another mystery thriller like I just oh I'm such a sucker for these especially with the cover art like I don't know there's something about it that's mysterious and atmosphere and stuff and even if the story may not be as spooky and good they do lure me in so this one is for your own good. The teacher of the year at this elite private school will do anything to be left alone by all these pesky parents so that he can actually help his students succeed. I'm not entirely sure what part of that is mystery thriller. Yeah, I don't know. That really doesn't give me any, any clue, but I like school settings. I like taking a close look at these elite private schools and seeing maybe the darkness that hides beneath the surface. Yeah, I don't know. Could be interesting. All right, now we're into August. Uh, these come out the 3rd of August. How We Fall Apart. So this one is one of the few YA fictions that I've, I've put on this list. When a former, no, when their former best friend dies, three girls and a when their former best friend dies, three girls at an elite prep school are, oh, when their former best friend dies, three girls at an elite prep school find themselves, their selves? Fuck, I can't talk today. Find themselves the prime suspects, uh, implicated by an anonymous social media user who happens to know all their secrets. This kind of really reminds me of a book I just finished, Ace of Spades, which I absolutely loved. If this one is anything like that one, because that one had like gossip girl elements, like with like a, an unknown anonymous, like social media poster who knows all their secrets. So yeah, if this one's anything like that one, I'm probably gonna love it. And again, more like elite school stuff I apparently am into right now. Out on the 17th, we have The Family Plot, another mystery thriller. When their father dies, a family obsessed with true crime finds a body already in his grave, and then they uncover some pretty shocking family secrets. And I'm nosy, I like gossip, so anything with like family secrets, all right, I'm interested. And as well, a family obsessed with true crime love the true crime aspect um it could be pretty interesting like if typically if someone is obsessed with true crime they might already be inclined to be an amateur sleuth so if 
this family has to uncover some some secrets and questions yeah it could be it could be fun velvet was the night uh, so this one is by Silvia Moreno Garcia and I read I read Mexican Gothic by her and I didn't necessarily love it but I did like the vibes and I really liked the parts in Mexico so I, I hope I end up liking this one I did try reading the gods of Jade and Shadow I believe it's called I did not make it very far in that book. I don't know what it was. Maybe like the specific writing style, like that specific kind of magical realism was like not for me. Hopefully I like this one better because I do want to like this author. Like I love reading stories set in Mexico, but I'll have to check this one out and, and see how it goes. Uh, but anyway, this one takes place in 1970s Mexico City. A woman craving adventure and romance investigates her neighbor's disappearance where she meets an eccentric thug who longs for a better life. All right, all right. I'm intrigued by the disappearance uh, part. I don't know. I don't know. There, I feel like there aren't enough details in here for me to like fully gauge how interested I'll actually be in a story, but probably gonna check it out. Okay, now we're into September. So again, these dates are like best guesses at best, not fully set in stone. On the 7th, we have another Silvia Moreno Garcia book. Uh, this one I'm definitely more excited about, Certain Dark Things. So this one is fantasy horror. And like, I think before I even saw who the author was or anything about it, I saw the cover and I was like, okay, sign me up, yes please. Like the aesthetics going on here is very much up my alley. So I, I'm hoping so hard that I like this book because I want to so bad. This is a dark and intimate little story about vampires and gangsters and life in Mexico City. Please, please be good. I want this to be good. So I have high hopes for this one. I'm definitely gonna be checking it out once it is available. Another one I'm super excited about, this comes out on the 16th and it is Hawthorne Legacy, a YA mystery. And uh, this is the sequel to The Inheritance Games that I read not so long ago that I was obsessed with. Like it was just so much fun to read. It flew by and I, <laughs> I just love like the 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 Nancy Drew vibes, the sleuthiness to everything. It, it was quite fun. Yeah, so they're saying that the inheritance games ended with a bombshell and now the heiress Avery has to pick up the pieces and figure out who might hold all the answers to her questions and why this guy Tobias left his entire fortune to Avery a virtual stranger rather than his own daughters and grandsons. So it's continuing that line of mystery, line of questions, and it sounds like it's going to be more of an adventure than it, because the first book was very much focused on the Hawthorne house. So it sounds like this one is going to be breaking out into like, I think it was like New York City or like the surrounding areas. So very excited about that. We're probably also going to get some more romance. I'm down. Okay, this one is scheduled for the 21st of September, Under the Whispering Door. So this one is just a basic fantasy novel. When the Reaper comes to collect Wallace Price after his death and send him to the afterlife, instead, he falls in love with the ferryman and refuses to move on. So this guy Wallace, I guess he really doesn't want to move on. I don't know how much that influenced his falling in love with the ferryman, but I am intrigued. Sounds a bit queer. I'm down. And yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Ooh, okay, so the premise of this one hooked me in right away. Slewfoot, A Tale of Bewitchery. This is a horror fantasy. A spirited young English woman, Abatha, arrives at a Puritan colony betrothed to a stranger only to become quickly widowed when her husband dies under mysterious circumstances. All alone in this pious and patriarchal society, Abatha fights for what little freedom she can grasp onto while trying to stay true to herself and her past. 
and the cover and even the story itself, the, the, the plot summary, sounds pretty witchy. And I am down for anything like that. I haven't really read too much like historical fiction or really anything surrounding like the colony times, like colonial America or anything like with Puritans. So I, I don't know. I, I think the, the spooky witchy elements are going to be enough to reel me in. The setting itself isn't really doing much for me at the moment, but I'm, I'm curious to see how it plays out. Okay, that's all of the ones I have for you today. I hope to be doing this type of video again in like the end of September, looking at like the rest of the year, like October, November, December. Um, hopefully you liked it and maybe you have found a couple new books to add to your TBR. And if not, if you're interested in upcoming releases, this is not all of them, not by a long shot. So if you didn't necessarily find any new potential favorites, then I recommend checking out articles, Goodreads, wherever you find book recommendations and, and see what else is out there. Okay, that's gonna be it for me this week. I hope you do something nice for yourself, something nice for others, and I hope you have a great week. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!